Hello, I'm Alan Davis, a Christian, a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and a church planter here in New York City. And we are here to help you to find and maintain love and joy and peace in your heart. By the grace of God, over the last 40 years, I've been able to read the Bible an average of five times a year. And the reason that I do this is simply because that after an hour, an hour and a half, or two hours of reading the Bible, usually in the morning, there begins to be produced in my heart all of this love and joy and peace, which gives me a purpose for living and joy for living my life. And you can have this too. I hope you can stay for today's study. This is a ministry of the Bronx Building Baptist Church. A Christian needs fellowship with the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. Talking about this, the Apostle wrote this in 1 John chapter 1, verse 3, That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. He wrote this in 1 John 1, verses 6 and 7. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanseth us from all sin. Paul wrote this in Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. And Paul also wrote this in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 through 18, be not ye unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness or right living with unrighteousness, wrong living? Or what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial the devil? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel, an unbeliever? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Paul also wrote this in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 20, But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils, demons, these demon spirits, and not to God. And I would not that you should have fellowship with devils. Many individuals are fellowshipping with these demons of hell. And Paul did not want that. And wrote this also in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 11. And have no, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Now, one way, the way, in which we're going to be able to have fellowship with the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ, is understand God as He has revealed Himself in the Bible, which is the Word of the living God. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 21 makes this interesting statement. And the Lord appeared again in Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself 
to Samuel, the little Samuel, in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. Now, my favorite passage in the Bible talking about the Bible and our devotional life is John chapter 15. And the apostle wrote this starting in verse 1. I, talking about Jesus Christ here, I am the true vine, and my hot father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now are ye clean through the word which I have spoken unto you, the Bible. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, if ye abide in me, and my words, the Bible, abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples." Paul wrote this in Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. Let, allow, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. The psalmist said this in the longest chapter in the Bible talking about the Word of God in Psalm chapter 119, verse 11. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And say this in verse 53, Horror hath taken hold upon me because of the wicked that forsake thy law. Wicked individuals have forsaken the Bible. Jesus Christ said this in the upper chamber to the disciples in John chapter 15, verse 11. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy, that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. And said this in chapter 16, verse 24. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive that your joy might or may be full. Talking about Jesus Christ in Psalm chapter 16, the Bible says this, starting in verse 8, I have set the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad, and my glory rejoiceth, because my flesh also shall rest in hope. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou wilt show me the path of life in thy presence. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Fullness of joy is found in God's presence. And today we're going to be looking at two aspects. So what are some of the aspects of this joy that is only found in His presence? So today we're going to be looking at two of these aspects concerning this joy that is found in God's presence. The first aspect of this fullness of joy spoken about 
in Psalm chapter 16, verse 11, has to do with his earthly presence. A Christian needs to come before his presence in this world. In the first grade in Tennessee many years ago, I memorized Psalm chapter 100. That was the requirement. Which says this, starting in verse 1, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Come before his presence. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. Going back to Psalm chapter 16 verse 11, the Bible says this, in thy presence, in thy earthly presence here, in thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Jesus appeared to John on the Isle Patmos in Revelation chapter 1, and the Bible says this starting in verse 12, and I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned I saw seven golden candlesticks, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one likened to the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, clothed with a garment down to the foot and girded about the paths with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet likened to fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. And his countenance, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when he saw him, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in thy right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels, or messengers, of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Psalm 1611 in thy presence, John was in the presence of Jesus Christ as he saw his countenance shining like the sun. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Peter, James, and John was, were on the Mount of Transfiguration in Matthew chapter 17 with Jesus Christ. And it says this, starting in verse 1, And after six days Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face on earth did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias, or Elijah, talking with them. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here, if thou wilt. Let us make three, here, three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias, or Elijah. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face, and were sore afraid. And Jesus came and touched them, and said, Arise. Be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. So Peter, James, and John, here on the Mount of Transfiguration, were in the earthly presence of Jesus Christ. And it says this again, Psalm 1611, In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. 
Moses was up in the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. And it says this in Exodus chapter 34, verses 33 and 34. Until Moses had done speaking with them, he put a veil, talking about speaking to the Hebrews who came out of Egypt, put a veil on his face. But when Moses went in before the Lord to speak unto him, he took the veil off until he came out. And he came out and spake unto the children of Israel that which he was commanded. And the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone. It was radiating. And Moses put the veil upon his face again till he went in to speak unto him. So Moses, in the historical context, on earth, when he appeared before the Lord, had no doubt this fullness of joy. His face was radiating, shining. Psalm 1611, In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. And Paul talked about this event, the New Testament, the Old Testament, comparing the two. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 6 through 16, and it says this, Who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament. The New Testament. Not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. But if the ministration of death, written and engraved in stones, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses, for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away, how shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? For if the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more, much more, doth the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. For even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect by the reason of the glory that excelleth. For if that which is done away was glorious, much more that which remaineth is glorious, seeing then that we have such hope Seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speak, speech. And not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished now. But their minds were blinded, for until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away, untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament. The New Testament, spoken about in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. The Old Testament, clearly spoken about in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 14. Which veil is done away in Christ. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it, the heart, their heart, shall turn to the Lord, and they're going to be saved one day. They're going to come to Jesus Christ. The veil shall be taken away. So, we see here in the Bible, the word of the living God, that many individuals, John, Peter, James, Moses, was in the earthly presence of the Lord. And it says this one more time, Psalm chapter 16, verse 11, In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. The other aspect concerning this fullness of joy spoken about in Psalm chapter 16 has to do with his heavenly presence. In Luke chapter 16 we see the story of a rich man and Lazarus a poor man. And it says this, starting in verse 19, There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried 
by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember. Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise, likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from thence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldst send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, five brothers, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Lazarus saith unto him, They have Moses, this is the Bible, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. But he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. So the one positive thing about this story was Lazarus who in God's presence was now being comforted. Psalm 1611, In thy presence is fullness of joy at thy right hand. There are pleasures forevermore have you received eternal life. Paul said this in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8, We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore, we labor that, whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. Psalm chapter 16, verse 11, Paul saw it clearly that when he died, he was going to be in a better place. Because in God's presence is fullness of joy at thy right hand. There are pleasures forevermore. Paul wrote this in Romans chapter 14, verse 17, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So we can receive this joy in this life, but in the next life, we're also going to be receiving this fullness of joy because we're going to be in His presence. The New Jerusalem is spoken about in Revelation chapter 21. It says this, making this interesting statement in verses 10 and 11, and he carried me away in the spirit to a, high, a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Verse 11, having the glory of God. And her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like unto a jasper stone, clear as crystal. And he goes on to say this in verses 23 and 24, And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it. And the Lamb, Jesus Christ, is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. So today we looked at the two aspects concerning this fullness of joy. Many individuals are living a miserable life. Destruction and misery are in their way. But we saw that an individual in this life, in this earthly, present world, can, could, it is possible for you to have joy, unbelievable joy in your heart. Many individuals are lacking that. And the world in sin is not going to produce that for you. And also the second aspect that we looked at today is his heavenly presence. 
The fact that eternal life is through Jesus Christ our Lord. He that believeth in him has everlasting life. He that believeth not shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. And so today, if you're uncertain about your eternal destination, bow your head in repentance and faith in the simple gospel message that he died on Calvary's cross. He was buried in the tomb and the third day miraculously rose again from the dead. And pray something like this if you're uncertain indeed about your eternal destination. Dear Heavenly Father, I am sorry for my sin. I am a sinner, but I believe in the simple gospel message and accept you now as my personal Savior. Amen. Let us know if you receive Jesus Christ as Savior. Uh, subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Ring the bell. Do all those things. And uh, we're glad that you tuned in today. And look for our next video, God willing, in the future. And have a very, very good day.